Welcome everyone to the holiday themed true crime mini series. Get ready to delve into a chilling and tragic story that will leave you stunned. From a quiet engineer to a harrowing descent into darkness, this is a tale that will keep you on the edge of your seat. This is the gripping story of Bruce Jeffrey Pardo, and it's unlike anything you've ever heard before. Bruce Jeffrey Pardo was born on June 28, 1956, in Monterey Park, California. He grew up in a middle-class family and had a relatively normal childhood. He went on to attend California State University, Fullerton, where he earned a degree in mechanical engineering. After graduating, Pardo worked a number of different jobs, including as an engineer for several aerospace companies. Those who knew him described him as a quiet, reserved man who kept to himself. However, he had a dark side as well. Pardo had a history of domestic violence and had been arrested multiple times for assault. In 1984, Bruce Jeffrey Pardo met his future wife, Sylvia Pardo, while they were both working at an aerospace company. The couple married in 1985 and had a daughter together. However, their marriage was troubled from the start, and they separated multiple times over the years. In 2007, Sylvia filed for divorce, and the proceedings were contentious. Pardo was ordered to pay his wife a significant amount of money in alimony and child support. He was also required to surrender his firearms as a condition of the divorce. In the months leading up to the attack, Bruce Jeffrey Pardo's mental and emotional state deteriorated rapidly. He lost his job and was struggling to make ends meet. The stress of the divorce and financial problems took a toll on him, and he began to spiral out of control. On Christmas Eve around 11.30 p.m., Bruce Pardo, dressed as Santa Claus, arrived at his former in-law's residence in a rented car. He was armed with multiple 9mm handguns and carried a large gift, wrapped package that contained a converted air compressor designed to spray racing fuel. When he knocked on the door and his eight-year-old niece answered, Pardo immediately opened fire, injuring her. He then started shooting indiscriminately at the people who were attending the party. After using the handguns, Pardo unwrapped the gift package containing the modified air compressor and sprayed fuel throughout the interior of the house. Authorities suspect that he intended to ignite the fuel with a flare, but an unintended explosion occurred when the fuel came into contact with an open flame in the house. This tragic event resulted in the death of nine family members, the Ortegas, four of their children, two daughters, in-law and the teenager at the computer would all die at the hands of Bruce. With three others sustaining injuries, one of the survivors managed to reach a neighbor's house where she contacted the police and identified Pardo as the likely perpetrator. Pardo had evidently planned a meticulously organized escape he had rented multiple rental cars and strategically placed one near the residence of his ex-wife's divorce attorney, stocked with supplies and maps of the Southwest and Mexico. There were concerns that the attorney might have been a potential target as well. Additionally, Pardo had arranged to visit a friend in Iowa and had purchased a plane ticket for Christmas morning from Los Angeles to Moline, Illinois. He was also carrying cash concealed on his person Following the explosion and fire, Bruce Pardo suffered severe third-degree burns on his arms and legs. After setting the house ablaze, Pardo changed out of the Santa suit and drove to his brother's residence in Selmar, where he was later discovered dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. It's important to note that his brother was not present in the house at the time of Pardo's death. Near his brother's house, Pardo had parked his rental car, which contained remnants of the Santa suit. The suit had been rigged as a booby trap, designed to trigger a fire and set off approximately 200 rounds of ammunition if disturbed. At Pardo's own residence in Montrose, the police found five empty boxes for semi-automatic handguns, two shotguns, and a container for high-octane fuel tank gasoline. They also discovered what was described as a virtual bomb-making factory within his home. The police speculate that Bruce Pardo's motive for the attack was related to marital issues. 
After the couple got married in January 2006, their marriage quickly deteriorated within the first year. One of the main sources of conflict was Pardo's refusal to open a joint bank account with Sylvia. He also expected his wife to use her own finances to take care of her three children. It is also suggested that divorce might have been triggered by Pardo's concealment of a child from a previous relationship. This child had suffered serious injuries in a pool accident several years earlier, and Pardo had not been paying child support to the child or his ex-wife. In June 2008, a divorce court ordered Pardo to pay $17.85 in monthly alimony to his spouse. During the divorce proceedings, Pardo confided in a friend that his wife was taking him to the cleaners. In July, despite having no criminal record or history of violence, Pardo was terminated from his job as an electrical engineer. At ITT Corporation Electronic Systems Radar Systems, for falsifying hours, the divorce court temporarily suspended alimony payments due to his financial difficulties. However, as part of the divorce settlement, Pardo was obligated to pay his ex-wife $10,000, and she was allowed to keep the wedding ring and the family dog. Pardo complained in court that Sylvia was living with her parents, not paying rent, and spending a significant amount of money on luxury cars, trips to Las Vegas for gambling, expensive restaurant meals, massages, and golf lessons. Pardo and Sylvia finalized their divorce just one week before the tragic attack occurred. Thank you for joining on this gripping journey into the life and tragedy of Bruce Jeffrey Pardo. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you want to see more content like this. Your support helps me continue journey into the heart of true crime stories. Stay tuned for more investigations that seek the truth behind the headlines. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and peace.